Yeah, we, we don't yeah, want you so sucking up all our not, internet you here. Had, you haven't lost it by accident yet? So far, not yet. <laughs> all right. It's been there since uh, yeah. about 1900, so uh, mm -hmm. kept, oh, wow. I kept my buddy Chuck uh, Lee there in the hotel. So Dave, yeah, that's, you know, that's a plenty of street. It's plenty of like the last couple of days. And it's still so kind of on the you know, Oh, did you see this one? I guess as long as it'll be uh, doesn't fall down on your head. That's, that's what I talk about every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would if I were nervous. I'd be real nervous doing this. I don't know what's over the TLC. Yeah. I, yeah. I, told yeah. Girl, I told the girl around. Well, I don't think anybody else is coming by. I told the girl around. I told the girl around. It's a hard for the <laughs> What, what kind of engineer are you, Peter? Call the Tuesday, December 6, 2022 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Um, Joe, could you please call the roll? Sure. Rich Roberts. Here. Ryan Allard. Joe Hammer here. Jim Hughes. George Oikel. Here. Tom Dean. Here. Tony Homicki. Dave Edwards. Michael Vieira. Da David Drake. Here. Peter Lambruni. Here. Paul Thompson. All right. Thank you. Uh, so what's that? Four regular members and two alternates. So I'll seat Dave Drake and Pete Lumbruni for this meeting. Um, first item is a continuation of a public hearing, item 3.1, uh, 2125-22Z. Nishant Patel, uh, member owner of Shreemate LLC DBA, Manusos Liquors seeking a zoning text amendment to section 58B1 under provisions of section 101F of the Weathersfield zoning regulations, adding a minimum distance requirement for package store locations. So come on up, uh, just please give us your name and address again for the record and then. Yes, uh, hi, I'm uh, Nish Patel, uh, address 190 Spino Ridge, Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Uh, I'm here to uh, I, I wasn't sure if you guys got the copies of uh, stuff that I emailed Denise this afternoon. Emailed just a little while ago. Yeah, no, I know. I, I did that's, get that. Oh, you did get them. Oh, no, but I'm, they haven't got the chance to review it. I see. No, I'm passing two of them down here. For all right. Them. And I'm sorry, I'm not like very good at computers. I did all the work myself, and uh, I'll try to explain everything as much as I can. And Okay. So, you know, I was asked to measure the distances between the package stores that are currently there. And, um, you know, I, it, it shows on the uh, copy that I've submitted here that there, there's a conflict only between the Wolcott Hill, Wolcott Hill Liquors to Steve's Price Cutters. That's in the plaza where I think, I believe Price Right is. That distance is 1,348 feet. So that would be something, you know, had have to be grandfathered if we agree to write this amendment. Um, I've also submitted something from the state uh, which says, right, how they want, uh, they also are in favor of denying a liquor permit uh, that can affect uh, the location of anything that's related to like religion that they mentioned church in here, but I'm assuming it. So, and also schools, uh, they also particularly mentioned in on page two, which I highlighted that, uh, you know, which I, to, you know, if you read it, sort of like explains like how they don't want liquor stores to be next to each other. Um, another thing was, I, I, I think, I guess I failed to explain this to the commission last time was, again, you know, we have concentration, right? 
Now, concentration could be, you might say, so if somebody applies for a liquor store permit and if it's next to me, I might say that's a concentration. And yes, of course, I might say that's a concentration because it directly affects my business. So I might say, well, this is concentration. Somebody on the commission might say it's not a concentration because you know what? The property has been abandoned for the longest time and I think it's in the favor of town. If this property goes uh, into business, you know, it helps the town hall. So that's why I'm proposing, you know, hopefully we can come up with something where it explains when you apply for a liquor permit, what's not a concentration, what's an appropriate location to apply for this permit that's left. And another thing I wanted to mention was uh, the liquor permit that's from the state, which is one permit per 2,500 people. There is, I wanna say there is, I, and I should have drawn that, I should have brought that data, which I didn't, but I think there is about 50% of the town in Connecticut are not using every single permit that's available to the town hall because of the state regulations, which is one permit per 2,500. So for us to sit here and say, oh, we want the town to use all 10 permits, I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't, we definitely should, but that shouldn't stop us from putting a regulation that's gonna help to define, the is, is gonna help to strengthen the current regulation because the current regulation, to me, it's vague. It says concentration. So does that, and, and the current, current regulation, that was another question I had. Like, does that mean, like, if I'm in a plaza or, you know, for instance, at 398 Celestine Highway, we have a back room which we don't use. Does that mean I could apply for a liquor permit on there? Because it doesn't really say how this works. So, and w uh, the last thing I want to mention before you guys ask me questions on any of this stuff is, out of the nine permits, the five permits are on Celestine Highway. And then the 515 and the Spiros, which is on uh, Wolcott Hill, I think, Wolcott Hill Road, which is not that far from Celestine. Uh, it, I think I measured the distance here between the Celestine Highway and where Spiros is, and I'll tell you the exact distance for between the two, uh, is 2,600 feet. And, and the Steves, is 1,300 feet from Celestine Highway. So I remember somebody raising the question that we shouldn't put this regulation in because if somebody wants to put a package store on Celestine Highway, which we currently have five out of 10, and two are in the 2,500 feet proximity of Celestine Highway, and the two are on the other side, which is on Burlington Pike. I mean, I, I, I don't see if there's an issue because if somebody wants to go on Burlington Pike, sure, but there's two, I don't see why third would be a problem on that side because there's plenty of distance between the two. So I'll rest my arguments there and whatever questions you may have, I would be happy to answer. George. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's wrong with things as they are in Wethersfield? We've been doing this for 60 or 70 years. I think it's working. I don't hear any complaints. Well, the I two. Don't hear any, I don't see anything in the news about liquor stores being a, a, like a ghetto or a congregation of them, uh, and we need more distance. Uh, I think, based upon the minutes that we received from the past, when I happen to be a commissioner, I've been on 38 years. So this is some of my legacy. I don't see a problem with any of it. And why do we need an arbitrary distance? Because sometimes distance isn't the big factor. The big factor is what is it near? Schools, churches, those kind of things. And uh, are there too many close together? I, I don't really think that's the case in Wethersfield. And so why are we putting an arbitrary thousand or you're recommending that? I, I don't see the advantage to it at this late date in, in the growth and development of our community. 
uh, we've dealt with it, and I think we've dealt with it pretty well over the, as I said, 60 or 70 years. I've been a part, good part of that half of that time, and uh, I'm not trying to defend myself or my parts in the past, because actually I look back at minutes <laughs> that I got, and I wasn't even involved in one of the decisions that I looked at in one of those minutes, but because I was absent that time. But uh, seriously, I, I, I don't see any problems. And I don't, what, what bothers me is what happens when you're asking for 1,500 distance. And, you know, um, what happens when somebody wants to come in with 1,475 feet from the ne nearest one? I mean, I don't see the reason for distance as being a factor in decision making because I think this commission has dealt with the issues of how close they are, how many there are. If, the, if you're there and another one comes in near you, uh, for example, on the Silas Dean, we're probably going to, I'm not going to say we're going to reject something like that because I can't say that ahead of time because we'll look at the whole thing. But if it's too close to you, and so forth, compared to others where it might go, we, we'll make a decision to probably not to not want it. Uh, and that's what we've done in the past when, when things get too close to each other. And I think it's worked out quite well. So why, why do you want to put an arbitrary amount of distance when maybe, maybe at, at times there's a package store across the street from another one and they want, they are nearby anyway, and not across the street. And that's happened further down the Silas Dean at one point, I remember. Yep. And, uh, you know, these, these are issues. And, you know, it may, hey, maybe citizens of the community think one liquor store is charging too much. And they'd like to see another liquor store in there. And they may come in here and say that to us. Maybe you want to put another one in to give them some competition. I don't know. There are a thousand and one reasons why no, I, I, distance isn't the reason, and that's the whole point I'm making. Why are you arbitrarily wanting to establish a distance at this point in time in the growth of this town when a lot of it's developed already? Yeah, I mean... Peter? Uh, adding to George, uh, we received our 1992... 1992 March uh, 3rd, I guess it was March 3rd, minutes uh, for a decision that was made regarding this very point that you're arguing. Back in 1992, there were regulations that were very restrictive. We had 1,500 feet, as you're suggesting, from location to location. There was also, I won't read all of this, but there was also uh, so far from schools, uh, so far from, uh, uh, I guess, areas that would be considered some sort of shopping center. And, you know, what this meeting was about was that the, yeah, at that time there was a different um, planner. He said that in his review of these regulations, and if you, you looked at what the distance is from, from place to place, but you just can't look at that. What we wanted to know is what effect does it have uh, town-wide? And he did that in 1992, and this was Tunderman, and he says that in his opinion, the existing regulations pertaining to locations for the sale and service, blah, 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 uh, are, are rigid and inflexible. That, that was his contention back in 1992. Uh, and... Uh, he said that he had done an analysis and he, he colored things in orange and in red. And he said, essentially, these regulations had pretty much locked out any further uh, possibility for uh, liquor stores in, in you know, the pertinent areas where we'd want liquor stores. So his conclusion was, it doesn't really make sense uh, to have all these regulations. You guys, uh, should be more flexible and you guys should be able to look at the conditions as they exist and as a commission decide what's proper and not proper. This is George's point. Yeah, yeah no, I get it. So, so, so this commission in 1992 basically removed everything that you're suggesting to pull back in. 
I mean, see, I didn't know, I don't know where they were coming from, but currently the way it is, right? Uh, it, so it's up to the commission to decide, and I trust the commission, but it's up to the commission to decide whether somebody's gonna, so the last application got denied at the address which was near City Fish Market. Now let's say that same application comes to m next to me and gets approved. Well, I'm gonna be like, well, well, how is that not a concentration? If that the previous application was concentration and the previous applicant was said the traffic was an issue and the parking lot was not paved. Now if somebody's coming next to me, how am I not gonna come back here and say, wait, if that was concentration, what is this? So. It was okay to not put one there, but it's okay to put one next to me. Well, it's not okay. This commission will decide. If and and I, again, you, I'm you, saying. You're presuming that this commission would give it blanc, uh, you know, carte blanche. That's not what we're saying. This commission would listen to you and to your claim. Yeah. There may be a, a valid and legitimate claim. And we would use it in our deliberation. With or without any regulations, that would be our responsibility. Yeah. So this, this is where this has ended up in 92. Basically, these regulations were considered too restrictive and essentially locked out any further activity in this, in this business sector. And, I, and if, it, if this was the case in 92, it's got to be a heck of a lot worse now if you do the, the same analysis that this guy did. If I was here in 1992, I would argue otherwise by explaining where are the locations that this could have went. It was present, the way it was probably presented in 1992 was sure, or this, this is rigid because there was not such an economic development was, that was going on on Old Weathersfield and on Burlington Pike. There's plenty of vacant buildings on Burlington Pike. There's plenty of stuff that you could do in Old Weathersfield to put another package store. So I would, uh, I would say, Yes, in 1992, it might have been rigid because of the availability of the commercial lots that were available to put up a back store, and that 1,500 feet probably made it hard back then. But in the current circumstances, I, and that's why I measured the distances, and I'm showing you there is plenty of room to put that 10th permit wherever it needs to, where if somebody wants to put a, a back store in Weathersfield with 1,500 feet, there's plenty of space to put one there. And the second point, we, again, where we are persistent about saying, oh, liquor store is very acceptable business, while well, I would argue my family would say something else. My family doesn't drink, so they would say liquor store is not an acceptable uh, business because we're saying no to dispensary. I see, I see this cannabis business, everybody's been arguing about like, oh, we don't want it in our town, we don't want it in our town. 20 years down the road, maybe every town is gonna say they want it in the town, but that doesn't, just because one person thinks it's okay to have more liquor stores, and that's why we shouldn't restrict uh, the regulation. Because, so, I'm not trying to stop the competition. What I'm trying to do here is, I'm trying to make sure the, the regulation is in such way where I know uh, what I could foresee the future, right? Instead of like me thinking the zoning is this gonna decide the future of my business. That's another thing that's, because I would have to literally rely here on the zoning commission to make that decision whether the next package store is gonna be next to me or not. So that's where I'm coming from. And, and it, this is standard, right? I mean, I give you an example of Rocky Hill, Cromwell, Middletown, uh, Newington, where every single town has some sort of distance requirement for the package store, just what everybody is doing with cannabis. Even though, you know, to George's point, George is like, package store is, it's easy, right? Where every, everybody accepts the package stores in the community now. I, I would say I would love to accept cannabis in communities now, but not everybody is thinking the same way. Richard, you, looks like you were here in that meeting. I'm just reading. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I remembered the, right. that we had the conversation. I mean, but yeah. so, um, I, I mean, what what do you recall? What what was the sentiment, and why did it make sense in '92? Well, I mean, it still makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Tom wanted to speak, and Joe wanted to speak. I'll. I'll refer to them. Mr. Patel, I think your last, uh, you know, several sets of remarks 
uh, have put the, in effect, the crux of your, your, your application, your argument for your application, which it is designed to protect your business. And uh, uh, such uh, uh, ordinances uh, as this, or regulations such as, as that that you propose, have an historic effect of reducing competition. It is uh, an attempt to help certain businesses at the expense of certain other potential businesses. I don't think that's what this commission is in the business of doing. And the, you know, I, I'm, I'm in pretty much in equal agreement with uh, George's uh, comment. Our regulation provides flexibility based upon criteria that the commission may can make a decision on. It's not an arbitrary standard that is just cobbled out of the netherworld someplace. But there are standards that require discretion and judgment. And so long as that discretion and judgment is not arbitrary nor abused, the commission can act upon it. And if there are uh, dissensions from that opinion, there's always the resort to uh, you know, appealing it to the legal process. Your statements about uh, uh, the, the vagueness of, of the current uh, regulations, I, I disagree with. They are, uh, they're, they're broad, but they certainly do have uh, justiciable uh, uh, standards upon which the commission can make a viable and, and lawful ruling. And, and you know, if there is facts to the contrary, that can be determined uh, in, you know, on, a, on an appeal. But you know, the, the kinds of, uh, of vagueness, vagueness of the language that you are citing, that's largely been resolved through case law. Uh, because these are not the kind, you know, this is not the, not the sole place where these kinds of arguments have been raised before. And um, uh, I'm, I'm to a point where I, I tend to agree with George based upon the ancient standard of, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rich. So I think I'm kind of on the same lines uh, of, of thought as the other people who've spoken. But I guess one, one thing that to me is really important is the part that says undue concentration in our current regulations, that's a consideration in addition to the normal special permit factors. This is a special permit use and special permit criteria include comprehensive examination of any potential impacts, whether it's traffic, noise, so on and so forth. And I think, um, you know, so that's gonna be based on a case by case in terms of what is the specific location. And it could be that we feel that from a traffic perspective, something that's a thousand feet away or on the other side of the street from something else, it may be okay on one side and not on the other or 800 feet this way and not that way. I think the, the 1500 straight line test you know, to me, that would make more sense if we were sort of either a rural or undeveloped town where we haven't been mapped out yet. But I think at this point in our development with reuse of, uh, of properties on the Silestine Highway and the Berlin Turnpike, I think the 15 would be limiting us. Just to give you an example, maybe we decide you've got a shopping center on either side of the Silestine Highway or within a thousand feet of each other on the same side and that it actually makes sense to have a package store less than 1,500 <clears throat> because if it's in a shopping center, a lot of the customers are gonna be there already to visit other stores. It's not gonna be unique trips just to get to the package store, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They're, they're, especially with reuse of, of properties, we might think it's much more appropriate to be less than 1,500 than to be 1650 in a particular case. So I, I'm comfortable that we've got the special permit review and we've got the undue concentration aspect in addition under the current reg. And I think the, the, the application that you spoke on and against, I recall a few months ago, was denied. And to me, 
that's an example of us applying all the different criteria that we have in the existing regs, and that's where we uh, came out. But again, quarter of a mile up the road, down the road, we have to look at it, and that's not before us tonight. But I'm, I'm comfortable with what we have, and I think it would actually be narrowing and limiting to, to have a black and white straight limit that, that I don't think would be a good idea. One of the things that I had asked for during the last hearing was not necessarily what what you provided, which is how far apart are the locations currently. That was that was something that someone else had asked for. And I think, you know, frankly, we had acknowledged that even if your locations were less than 1,500 feet, you know, if we were to amend the regulations, they'd be grandfathered, you yeah. know, so, so it wouldn't put anybody out of business, um, you know, to, to impose this regulation. But what I had asked for was something showing 1,500 feet from every existing location so that we could understand the impact of the proposed text amendment on what other locations in town would be available. You yeah. know, what other locations within, you know, viable commercial districts would be available for, you know, if another place was going to be opening up. Um, and I don't see that. I, I'm guessing you don't have that or? No, uh, so I must have missed that to note down that and I don't have that. But okay. I could, like Old Weathersfield would be one place where that is completely away from everything else. Yeah, I mean, and and frankly, and then it's not like I make a habit of studying package store locations. Right, no, but I, I mean, understand the one, that. One by the Old Town was the only one that I remember ever being down there right. that's not here now. And, you know, there are probably like two or three other places anywhere in town where there had been package stores that aren't there now, like by Marshalls and... Um, you know, one other place, and, and I guess, um, you know, uh, acknowledging that Old Weathersfield would be probably outside the 1,500-foot Ab radius. Absolutely. I mean, it is outside yeah. that radius. And then there is some room on Burlington Pike, as you see, because the distance between the two is almost 5,500 feet. And so, you know, I, I'm gathering, like, obviously, I'm not being able to convince the commission here for what I'm looking for. Um, but I just want to repeat myself here one more last time, is what, what this does is still lives in the hands of the commission, which I trust, which has made the right decisions in the past. But considering 1,500 feet, it solves a lot of other issues for, like for future, because if uh, an applicant that was rejected and some new application that's going to be approved for whatever reason you know it creates a question right uh well i was rejected on the basis of traffic study and the concentration of a package store somebody could argue how is this application approved even though it's like uh, joe mentioned um uh, thousand feet down the street, how much different the traffic really could be. Because we never did the traffic study the last time. I mean, we just all assumed it's a busy traffic junction. Can I just, I, I think, um, what was I gonna say? The, uh, you know, I think the differences in traffic that you could see is one business could have a driveway that's in a bad spot because they're stacking at a traffic light that's right in front of it or has an awkward left turn or entry turn or something like that. And literally, if you go 300 feet down the road, you may not have that situation anymore. So I think it, it, it can vary. And I guess one question for you, I'm not, I don't think I'm seeing on the drawing that you gave us a red dot for where the package store was next to um, Marshall's and that Yeah, shopping. they closed, so I didn't do it. No. So qu question for you though, I'm assuming that that is that one within a thousand, within 1500 feet of the one across the street at the Weathersfield Shopping Center, I'm assuming? Yes. And is it also- Because just the, the distance between town line and 
uh, sorry, yeah, so Townline and Weathersfield or uh, Liquors is 1,577 feet. So that would be like more like 700 feet. Would it, would it also be within 1,500 feet of town line? Yes. So they would, that would be all within 700. Of, but of two different stores, it would be within 1,500. Yes, yes, because yeah. Weathersfield literally would be 200 feet from each other because yeah. that would be like across the street right. from each other. Yes. Right, but yeah, I, I would just say you, 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 could, you, know, you could make a point, I think, that that location next to Marshall's in a shopping center that has a lot of traffic for Marshalls and other stores already, you know, not a single destination store. It's got a, not only an entrance on the Seilstein Highway; it has a second entrance on Mill Street. You could make an argument that that's a safer, more appropriate condition than to have something that's only got you know one way in and out out of the Seilstein Highway. You know, in in a bad location for traffic queuing or or whatever. So, you know, I think. What, what this is basically telling us is under this proposed regulation, like we one, wouldn't be able to put like one the there. the one we turned down in Cave Fish. Correct, as contrasted to this one, which I think is much different than the one we turned down. The one, page. Right, Neighbors. right. Mary, you're all right. Go ahead. To be honest with you, I know, there's, I know there's a liquor store is different, but we shouldn't be turning things down because of competition. Though. I, again, I haven't seen No, no, I'm not, so I'm not seeing... If you do this, we should put maybe 1,500 square foot between paint stores and uh, gas stations. And yeah, but uh, I'm just saying, this was know, a controlled the substance. It's different. It's different. This was definitely controlled the substance. It's like what everybody has been doing with cannabis, right? I mean, ideally, people would just argue possibly, like, why so much zoning regulations on putting a dispensary? I mean, and that was the case with alcohol. Yeah. So that's why a lot of the towns have been... Uh, you know, uh, put in some zoning regulations where they're not having a bunch of liquor stores and that's all in town. Because just because the state is saying, oh, you you get to have one permit per, per 2,500 people, just like what state is saying right now, you could have two dispensaries per town. I'm with you, but the idea is that if you need yeah. a thousand feet, the guy won't get drunk before he hits 1,500 feet. Because no, no, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm not saying that. This I'm is just, just to just have sure a community point. where, you know, you're not just having a I bunch understand. of yeah, liquor stores and the, that's again, you all. Just say think, don't, we don't I wanna, mean, I don't want 50 paint stores on South Street Highway. I, you know, my son goes to school. I, I wouldn't want a liquor store next to the school. I wouldn't want one either. Yes, exactly. So That's wanna, what I'm going to say. I wouldn't want a store there either. Same yeah. point. If yeah, so it's point. not so much about just competition, but it's also to make the regulations it's where different. it's defined where things can go and where things can't go. I guess to, to answer Peter's question from a while ago, I mean, like George, I was here for this conversation 30 long years ago, and, um, it, you know, it, it made sense to me then, you know, particularly when the law partner of your lawyer came and spoke in favor of it, <laughs> um, you know, as, as an improvement over what had been in place before with the separation distances and all that sort of stuff, because, you know, what it, what it basically forced people to do was to go get variances, and you know, the ZBA would give variances and, you know, the, the way he described it was, you know, if you were popular, if you, you know, knew the right people and so forth, you know, nobody would challenge your variance, but if you didn't know the right people, your variance would get challenged and you'd lose. And that, yeah. that's just not a great way to, to manage things. Um, you know, so, so I, I, I thought it made sense 30 years ago and, and, you know, frankly, I think it's, you know, it, it's worked well for us since then. Um, you know, I, I think the recent experience that we had where there was, um, you know, an application to put one in, you know, in a location that had problems, um, you know, leaving aside concentration because that, you know, that to me would be secondary to you know, traffic and safety and queuing and entrances onto yeah. the highway and that sort of thing. I, I think, you know, we've we've managed to handle those kinds of issues um, responsibly. Yes. And, and you know, con we'll continue to do so. 
Um, you know, likewise, I, I don't think we have any interest in creating the undue concentration. I mean, it's something well, that we... Well, thank you. You know, yes. every time anybody comes in with any kind of liquor permit for well, a restaurant, thank you. I mean, we talked about it repeatedly when all the people were coming in in Old Weathersfield, you know, with restaurants and and different kinds of liquor permits. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time thinking and talking about, you know, at, at what point is, you know, is this going to be too much? And... You know, fortunately, I don't think we've gotten to that point, but I frankly think we might be getting close, um, you know, in terms of having seven restaurant liquor permits within one block of each other on Main Street, you know, m might be, you know, the, the, the point at which you say, like, you know, can't we do something different here? Um, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. But I, I think, you know, all of us up here do respect um, you know, your operation, your right to continue to operate and so forth. And, um, you know, balancing that with, um, you know, creating the undue concentration plus, you know, what is a safe location given the, given the various criteria. Um, you know, at this point we're talking about one place somewhere in town that, you know, remains to be seen. Um, you know, so, so we'll kind of take that as it comes. One other thing that, that you know, that, that I do know from work is that, you know, you've mentioned Newington's regulations has a separation distance. It does, but it also has a provision at the end of their section that essentially says that the commission can use the same criteria we have in our regulation, even if the 1,500 feet is, you know, is not met. So it... Um, Frankly, it's a better scenario, I think, than um, you know, going to the ZBA and hoping that you get the four right people there on a given night to get a variance, and you hope that your neighbors don't see it in the paper in 15 days and file a lawsuit. I mean, that that's that's not a good way to run a business, and and you wouldn't want to invest in a business if if that was the sort of um, you know regulatory regime that you were under. So. Um, you know, that's kind of a, a long-winded way of saying that, you know, I'm perfectly happy to revisit the issue, but I think it's been working well, and, um, you know, to kind of counterpoint Tom's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I, as I said last time, I think this is a solution in search of a problem that we, we don't have yet. And, you know, if at some point, um, you know, it looks like we do. I mean, frankly, the development of the town is about the same as it was 30 years ago, despite everybody's best efforts. So I don't, I don't honestly see what what facts have changed. Um, and I'm also a little uncomfortable even moving forward with it without knowing what the the actual impact of a 1,500 foot radius on all of these things would be, because. You know, it, it may end up putting the remaining location in a place we don't want it. But that's my thought. Okay. Peter. Can I just follow up on the variance issue? It was noted in the uh, minutes here that uh, in 92 there were 24 variances uh, that went to the uh, Board of Appeals, I think within yeah, 10 years prior. And of the 24, all but two were accepted. So essentially everybody was going to the ZBA and asking for uh, a variance to get what they wanted, regardless of what, what was said. And they were very restrictive, uh, much more restrictive even than you're suggesting back in 92. And, and, and even so, there was basically an escape clause for someone to go to ZBA and, uh, and get it done anyways. Uh, so if we were... Just as a matter of question, there, if we were to put back a 1,500 foot, would ZBA then be able to override that again like they did in 92? Yeah. All right, okay. I mean, and, and yeah, that, that would be the only thing because we have, you know, we have a finite regulation. We don't have discretion right. and if if the regulation doesn't work for them, they go to right. ZBA and get a variance. So just so I understand clearly, 
what we did is remove all these constraints, allowing much more discretion and flexibility in this commission and a special permit environment to decide what's right or wrong. And ZBA is essentially out of the picture, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. Yeah, different tax. I want to congratulate this applicant. Uh, I, I don't use his store because I'm near near one of your competitors elsewhere in town. That's I okay. Town. Uh, however, when I first moved into town 50 years ago, yeah, and uh, that's a long time. Is that during prohibition? God, yeah, it was about maybe about 70. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, too long. Uh, you know, I, I lived in the Fallbrook Apartments, and you were very close, and. You still have, and I went down there today to take a second look to make sure you were still the same. You have one of the best wine selections I think I can think of outside of some of the package store, the, the official ones up in New Hampshire where they have big things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you do, you still have that, and that's, that's, that's a positive thing. Well, and, uh, I, I just want to congratulate you as a, you know, not as an applicant, but as an owner. Well, thank you. I, I mean, I, I see where the decision is going to go towards, but I, I want to thank you for that. And, uh, you know, the selection is also because of what the regulations the state has right now. Because the state, by not allowing wine to, in the supermarkets and things like that, allows the small wineries to come in business in Connecticut, and that allows the small package stores to deal with, like, a huge wide variety of distributors instead of, uh, you know, the ones like wine lends into the supermarket, there's only gonna be four different brands of lumber you get or two different brands of paint you get. That's what ends up happening once it goes into the box stores. And that's why in Connecticut, yes, there is a huge variety of wine, whiskey, vodka, or anything you can think of, yes. And you keep it. Yeah. You have that. As long as I stay in business though. As long as you don't put another package store right next to me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Yeah, I, I wouldn't lie awake nights worrying about that. <laughs> thank you guys so much for your time, though. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else in the public that wishes to comment on this application? Anyone else? If not, is there a motion to close the hearing? Motion to close. Second. All right, motion by Joe, second by George to close the hearing. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, someone want to make a motion? Sure, I'll, I'll make a motion, and I, I think it's more appropriate to make it an affirmative motion to approve. Um, it's easier to figure out what the result is that way, so I will, for, for sake of uh, discussion, I will move to approve the um, proposed amendment to the zoning regulations. I'll second. Okay, motion by Joe, second by Tom. Uh, I, discussion? I, I guess I will just note that I will be voting against the motion that I just made um, for the reasons that we've all discussed uh, earlier during the public hearing. Thank you, Joe, for bringing the motion to us. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I'd like to uh, just say that uh, last time this was presented, I was actually kind of keen on the idea of having some sort of distance. Uh, you know, I didn't realize that this history that you brought up. Uh, so I thought that, you know, maybe sharpening the language, getting rid of the vagueness as the attorney suggested might be good things. And the only concern I had was, you know, would it limit us in, in putting a tent? And, uh, you know, how does it look like if you, if you lay it out? against all the existing wood plant uh, riches that you brought up. So uh, aside from the fact that we don't have that data, I've changed my mind on this after reading what happened in 92. Uh, I do agree that in the 30 years since 92, not much has changed because I've been in this town much longer than that. Uh, and if in 92, if, if Countryman was, was an excellent <laughs> uh, planner, and if in Countryman's opinion in 92, this was too restrictive and and uh, wouldn't have served us well as a commission. And the fact that, you know, m the ZBA became the escape clause for everybody that wanted <laughs> uh, to put in a package store uh, 
really uh, points out that we, we don't want to go back uh, to the future here. Uh, <laughs> literally, I, I think it's okay what we're doing and we should stick with it. So I've changed my mind and, and I, will, I will vote against that as well. Okay. Anyone else? All right. If not, uh, all in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. Nobody? All opposed? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Nay. Okay. Any abstentions? All right. Motion fails. I guess I, I just wanted to say to the applicant, you know, we appreciate your time and your effort on this, even though we may not have uh, the outcome obviously wasn't what you were hoping for. I think it was a helpful thing to really focus us on a section of our regulations that we have to deal with all the time and, you know, alternatives to it. So it was a, you know, I think it was a productive discussion. Yeah. I mean, it, and, and this is a kind of a unique industry and business that I, I think we need to kind of keep track of and, and make sure that we don't, you know, overlook or abuse or anything like that. Um, you know, just because of kind of the, the strange state regulatory regime and so forth. But I, I think, you know, the, the current owners are all responsible and we've been- Larry tells them no way it's going and there's no such person? I, 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 no, I, I think the, you know, the state has kind of- <laughs> I know. Weird priorities when it comes to regulating the liquor business. I, but, lot, yeah. I work for them. I have a lot of weird priorities here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next item: discussion regarding cannabis establishments. There it is. Um, after our discussion at the previous meeting uh, regarding potential um, inclusion of separation distances, um, I had um, taken a template from a few different communities that seem to have um, a few of the communities do have uh, a standard that seemed to be a good template to use. Um, this is compiled from three different uh, municipalities um, and just to begin the discussion. So essentially, um, it's giving you a few definitions um, that the approval if um, uh, would require a special permit. Um, that facilities would only be uh, allowed within the general business and regional commercial zones um, and production facilities and business park zones. Uh, the only separation distance that I did uh, include in this uh, draft for discussion is that uh, no dispensary be um, on a, so this actually, this, this uh, draft did include the 1,500 feet, not from educational or um, religious institutions, but other dispensary facilities. Um, it talks about signage restrictions, uh, parking requirements, security, um, and, uh, and, and that's about it. I just wanted to open it up for discussion and see if you wanted me to continue to finesse regulations, um, if you'd like me to formalize uh, an application to present to you to vote on. Um, Do we have any interest yet in a medical marijuana dispensary at all? Anybody even hint at it? Yes, I've gotten several inquiries. You have? Yes. 
over, over the last year or so, right? Um, all know. within the last six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. did, did you mean medical? You said medical. Uh, they're for recreational that I've gotten inquiries right. about. That's, that's yeah, the, nobody's, the question was nobody's doing medical anymore. Right. Should, should we send this back to town council? I mean, to look at it. I mean, I thought the town council <laughs> poo pooed the whole thing. They didn't want to do it at all. I have to have, you know, bring it up. You know, shouldn't we be listening to them? Right. Send it back to the council? That's well, well, my didn't the town council didn't want to do this at all, right? They threw right it town? at us, yeah. Why what? would we throw it back at them? Well, wasn't well, the opinion they didn't want to go there, right? James? Yeah, I mean, we asked them for their input, and, and I mean, I, my guess is that if we move forward with draft regulations, the same people that had input at the council level will have input for us here, and, you know, I would invite that so that at least you know, we're hearing the same things and can can respond to the same things. But I, you know, I think that was kind of their initial reaction was they want to no, they want no to retail, to but okay to production. And, you know, frankly, I don't think there's any real interest in production around here and that the real interest is in the, the retail. Yeah. I guess my only comment and, you know, for two reasons, one, just kind of not being hypocritical. Um, I wouldn't want to put a 1,500 foot separation distance here when we just decided we didn't want to have a 1,500 foot separation yeah. distance right. five minutes ago. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I, you know, I started with that because that is what is currently in place with our medical facility. Yeah. So just, you know, to for a starting point. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and Actually, in the recreational statute, it, it talks about separation distances and it sends you over to the liquor control statutes. But if you look at those, those separation distances are from like veterans hospitals and convalescent homes and monasteries and things like that. It, it's not separation from another liquor store. So, you know, I agree that everybody's doing it, but it's not specifically called mm -hmm. for in the statute. So, um, you know, I, I don't honestly think we're gonna have such a level of interest that particularly if we were to narrow it to those two zones and to do it by special permit that we would be having them within 1500 feet of each other just because of the nature of the industry. And based on the discussion we just had from the previous well, exactly. application, I mean, I think that that applies. The point that we're, we're just making, I think, right. is uh, my, my concern, uh, I guess it's uh, specifically with regards to uh, 4A. I, I don't see why we can't dovetail with the, you know, the same standards that we use for, yep. uh, you know, for, for controlling a liquor establishment. Right. Because that, you know, those are, you know, those are reasonable standards. Mm -hmm. they're, they're standards that this commission is used to working with, and uh, they've worked uh, very well, I think, for the community, for the public interest, as well as for the the uh, administration of, of the regulations by this commission. So, so I could point. revise the draft to include the proximity language that's already current in the 5.8 alcohol beverages. Yes. So Richard. Yes. Uh, I guess I'm wondering, should we be voting if we want this or not as a commission before we decide to do all this work? I figure we should. I, I mean. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, frankly, I've kind of put that on the table a number of times and we haven't, we haven't had enough people here, I think, to be representative. I mean, if, if there were, I think the last time I asked, there were five of us here um, you know, tonight there's six. Um, you know, there, there's supposed to be nine members and three alternates, and I know, you know, I know there are two people who feel strongly against it, and there's one person who feels strongly in favor of it who aren't here tonight. Um, but I mean, if, you know, if there are a number of people here tonight who just think we should, we should stick with a prohibition, then um, 
you know, I'm all ears because I, I don't want to make, right. you know, work for Denise and for us unnecessarily if, you know, if a majority of the commission or even a majority of whoever happens to be here on any given night right. votes against it. Because I remember when we were doing the medical marijuana regulations and the special permits, it was like every time we had a vote on anything, it was five to four, one way or the other, depending on who showed up. And, you know, I don't know whether that's going to be the same this time around or not, but, um, you know. So we should be dealing with the residents a lot, I think, on this, but I, I don't, I have yet to see anybody come and talk to us about this, right? I mean, nobody seems Either to way. Care. No, I'm saying yeah. nobody seems to care one way or the other, so. I, I, well, when they'll be here is the day after we do something. So, okay, that's good, then, because <laughs> we can always change it then. Yeah. <laughs> My personal opinion is I wouldn't even go forward with this thing. And, and again, not against marijuana, I'm all, more power to it, but I'm just saying, why waste that time, put a lot of effort into something that, I don't know, I don't see anybody so hot on this one. I, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll declare, I, I think we should prohibit it in this town. Yeah. That, that's my belief. Yeah. Uh, I give not against it, I just don't see to spend a lot of time on it. But I, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much benefit you get. People have argued that, well, everybody else is doing it, so why should we? Oh. Okay, that makes some sense. And if the town gets some benefit, some tax benefit, then why not cash in on it? It's kind of the only argument I've heard. Uh, but I haven't seen what that number is. I, you know, I, don't, I, I just don't think it's a good idea to have it in this town. Well, it's 3% of, of the gross sales. Yeah, which and, it, and there's like a restriction on what it can be used for. Yeah, but what kind of gross sales would like one dispensary have? I mean, is that 3% of... 100,000 a year is nothing. 3% of a couple million a year is, you know, that's substantial. So, I, I mean, I don't know what these things do. I think the turnover. expectation is that they they would be more like the couple million than the 100,000. Yeah. Or, or, or yeah. I'll only say. I mean, they're not selling chiclets. <laughs> <laughs> is that much you're okay. saying? You're kidding. Uh, e even with what I'm going to say, that on the on the line over here, next to the growing turnpike, we have a medical that we have fully operational stuff, uh, both the regular and the medical and so forth. Uh, practically, you might call it almost mother's day. It's, uh, it's right on the line. And I don't know why people think they need something here in this town or that it's gonna make a difference. And we're not gonna put it down in old Wethersfield or I don't know who would be interested in the side of the stream, but maybe. Uh, so, you know, already there's there's a major dispensary there. So but where, is, where is that at? Where's, where's that? It's What's just that? north of the animal hospital after process. It's in that white building that has like three or four fronts. It's maybe an urgent care or something. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. If we're declaring, I, I would tend to be in support of having such regulations and having that. There's a possibility of increasing the burden of community. Doesn't mean that where it necessarily will, will occur. But this whole area of, of uh, marijuana regulation and so forth has just been so fraught over the history of this country with uh, issues of, of, of race and class discrimination and, and factors that go way back in, in our history that are uh, you know, quite negative to to us as a, as a, as a republic as a civilized society uh, where you know, clearly uh, the powers that be have declared themselves over the timeline of our history being strongly in favor of liquor and, and strongly in disfavor of, of you know, other uh, drugs. So, uh, and marijuana has been caught up in, in that whole historical scenario, all without issues of, of fact or reason. And it's an emotional issue. And I prefer to have things based upon you know, facts and you know, demonstration of the real harm uh, versus uh, perceived, perceived harm. And, and uh, uh, I, I would tend to think that the uh, this commission would be well placed to make those kinds of decisions based upon 
is lawful criteria. And the state has already decided as a matter of public policy to permit this kind of activity, this kind of business activity in the state. And I think that public policy debate should be definitive and not have the other field or the other communities stand out as being denied it. When I was growing up as a child, I happened to live in the state of Arkansas. And the state of Arkansas had prohibition still after 1933. I happened to live in LaFayette County, which was a dry county. And it was a county in which I had classmates that went around making moonshine for farmers in the fall in order to have food to go to school on. And yet there is this perceived morality issue that gets caught up into this kind of – or this issue that I don't think really belongs there. I recognize that there is a great number of the public that have grave feelings with regard to this issue. And I respect that. But I also recognize there are many others in our society that would like to have access to this chemical or this batch of chemicals as a recreational drug, kind of on the same basis that we've allowed alcohol for the last 5,000 or 6,000 years to perpetuate itself in society. So I think it's a regulated industry. It should be a regulated industry, but not – I don't think there should be a prohibited industry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean I guess personally I would be supportive of it, but I'm not like adamant about it. To me it's just a question of we don't get to equity. We just have to challenge it for what it is. Maybe you get one or two more parcels. There's no hair off my back. And I'll be honest with you, I have my share of marijuana at home, so it doesn't bother me in the least bit. I just don't get that. My point is, is it worth the effort for one or two little stores maybe? You know, the way they have it set up, it's not easy to get it. So get a store. It'll probably end up being a big business of some sort, but that's fine. Yeah. I just – you know, like I said, you said you had a couple people come in. Was it a legitimate or just – I don't know. Like I say, it could be worth some money. Yeah, I mean I guess to kind of follow up on your comment and to say more, I think we've already done probably 75 or 80 percent of the work necessary to put something together. Copy and paste it, yeah, and we'll just clean it up. Yeah, I mean – and I'll send some comments because I think we need – you know, I know these are the – based on the medical regulations and, you know, there are new definitions that need to go in and so forth. So, you know, don't need to reinvent the wheel, but I think just to kind of get us off the dime, particularly since the moratorium doesn't go on forever, it would probably be good to have something proposed and have a public hearing on it and, you know, invite anyone and everyone who has an opinion and, you know, kind of go from there. Probably a good idea in the long term. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know – I mean, we don't have everything in town. I understand what Tom was saying, but we don't have used car lots. We don't have bars like we – I mean, other than – I'm just saying, we don't have everything. And there's things we – but again, I'm with you. It's copy and paste and 90 percent done. I guess it's worth – who knows? Maybe somebody's going to come up with a big home run. We'll make a lot of money out of that. But I agree with the chairman. I'd like to hear from the general public, you know, really, what it is worth. Yeah, I mean – And more commissioners may be present too to discuss. Yeah, that would be nice. And, you know, we have – I'm willing to commit, but I don't know. Brightest minds on the commission here tonight, but 
Let me get a few others <laughs> to show up. It would be nice. Uh, um, it's yeah, not a public reason, hearing, but I don't know. Does anybody in the audience have any comments? Yes. Are you, are you representing the council or are you a citizen? Uh, Tom Mazzarella, citizen and council member. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'd, I'd like to say that uh, I think the commissioner should be uh, a little bit more informed about what can be done with the potential uh, proceeds, if you will. Okay. Um, from what I've read it's fairly restrictive as to where the money can be spent and how it can be spent um, I think the way the state went about it to me it, it's bizarre where you're going to use part of the proceeds of selling the product for uh, addiction uh, remediation and helping people that become addicted, much the same as they've done with gambling. You know, they have all these programs to uh, uh, help uh, resolve gambling addiction when they're legalizing all forms of gambling. Um, it's constantly compared with alcohol, and uh, Commissioner Dean makes some excellent points about how, you know, one is more widely accepted than another. Um, uh, my personal opinion is that it's readily accessible to residents of Wethersfield. As you said, Berlin Turnpike, uh, Hartford, South Windsor. Um, it's not like we're, we're imposing a burden on the public where they can't have access to this product if they so choose. I, I am concerned about the volume of people coming into our town to purchase uh, cannabis. Um, it doesn't bring anything to the town to have um, $2 million worth of business generated on the Salestine Highway where I don't think the people are going to come from out of town uh, to buy cannabis and then spend uh, several hours enjoying a restaurant or doing some other activity in town. Uh, I just don't see where it's a great benefit. Um, I've been trying to get a feel for what was going to happen here. Um, I do plan on inviting the police chief, the Connecticut uh, Health District, uh, official and our social services department to speak against uh, cannabis sales as they did at the town council. Um, I have yet to read anything that really supports any health benefits other than medical marijuana uh, of, of cannabis. It's a, it's a recreational activity. So um, the police chief was, was fairly um, strongly worded against it. Uh, he sees, he doesn't see any benefit to it. He sees bad things uh, as far as his officers being able to uh, enforce traffic, uh, traffic laws and things of that nature. It's not so easy as doing a breathalyzer test like you do with alcohol. He had a number of valid uh, concerns. Uh, same goes with social services in, in the health district. So um, I think the, they won't hesitate to come in, but to me it seems like a, a lot of time and energy if the majority of the commission is opposed to it. So that's, that's where I stand with that. And like I said earlier, uh, we brought it up to the council. It wasn't a unanimous vote. It was, uh, I'm going to say it was five to 
five to three. So, um, just food for thought. And we did, we did opt to throw in the distribution and manufacturer processing all the other uh, forms of uh, cannabis business except for the recreational because it's not that we're adamantly opposed to to cannabis as a you know we just don't want to have that uh, occur but we just didn't see the benefit of having the volume of people and you heard one commissioner at the last meeting say you know they're literally lining up to get into these stores and I don't know if that's the case or it was just initially uh, a couple years ago I, I spent some time at the medical marijuana uh, facilities just to get an idea of the volume and it was it was like a revolving door it was constantly and you know same kind of thing that you were talking about with uh, um, a, a liquor uh, store in a bad location you know you, you're having all this traffic come into one facility you know, it's not like they spend any time there. They go in, do their business, come out, and if you have, you know, a steady stream of, of traffic, I don't see what the what the real benefits. And then <clears throat> coupled with now you do, say you do get 100000 a year or whatever, you know, that's great, but if it's so restrictive, uh, one of the restrictions had to do, like, you could improve the area that the facility was in. So... Let's say it, you put it on the corner of uh, Jordan Lane and Silestine. Well, you know, year one and year two, you you improve the the area that 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 stores in. What, what are you doing year eight and nine and ten? You can't just keep uh, doing the same thing. So, I just didn't see the benefit. But just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Chandler, if we want to go ahead with anything. We would have to go through some of the process that the council went through, hearing from the various people and conversations. Yeah, oh. well, I mean, it would be a public hearing, and, yeah. you know, we can't subpoena people to come talk to us. But Not it, only the yeah. public, which I was on, but yeah. the, the technical people, the chiefs and the mayor and what you know. Yeah. Chief, chief's opinion would make a lot of difference to me, honestly. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, obviously we'd make sure they were aware of it but you know they can come or they cannot come depending on and I, I have had ex uh, extensive conversations with the chief and he is not supportive of the regulations uh, I'll be honest with you if he's not supportive if we ever had a vote right now I wouldn't support it either then you know I'd be on his side that way because he wouldn't see any basis for it many places to go. Did yeah. this, this help here at all or are you no? I, I mean I'm I'm just at the point where I don't know if you would like me to formally submit for an application for a zoning text amendment that would be reviewed by Krog, come back to you for a public hearing and then a vote or if you are not interested in me proceeding. Well, I guess one question I have is when when is the moratorium? All right, so we don't have time to do anything, <laughs> um, basically because you know, come January first, somebody could come in with an application. Well, our regulations are prohibitive, so if it's not permitted, it's prohibitive. But the statute says that it would be evaluated on the same basis as a similar use. So our zoning enforcement officer's opinion is not that there is a, a similar use. Okay. Yeah. Well, it would be similar medical? Yeah. Liquor store? I don't, I don't well, those, those are the two that have been put out there as similar uses. I mean, I, I, I guess personally, I just kind of want to put an end to this one way or yeah. the other. And, and probably since we've already done the work on this, you know, 
I'll get you my comments before the end of the week. We can mm -hmm. tune it up and just sort of move ahead with that. And, you know, if it passes, it passes. If it fails, it fails. You know, we'll have a public hearing mm -hmm. probably sometime okay, so end of January, beginning of February, yeah. and then. So what you're going to do is go through the process. It makes sense to me. Yeah. And then we have an open hearing and hear from the public. And then take a vote. And up and take. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Makes sense to me, too. Yeah, I mean, because the alternative would be to, you know, draft a, draft a regulation amendment prohibiting it. Right. We have a hearing on that. The same conversation. Yeah, in the yeah. same conversation. And if that one fails, then, you know, we're back to nothing. So if, if we get it, I don't want to get, make you do a lot of work, but could we get a better understanding on the tactics, what we could actually do with town measures? Just, yeah. Know. Yeah, and that's, I, I that don't was, go crazy, but I'd like to see it actually. That was in the stuff that was sent around a few months ago when we right? first okay. were talking about it. I mean, that's one of those things we didn't pay there attention to. Like, you like don't pay attention to it until you really actually have yeah, <laughs> looked at it a lot. It's like a 3% local sales tax that can be used for six different things. Okay. You know, including like upgrading the immediate area, like you're saying, you know. Um, social counseling, drug abuse counseling, you know, those kinds of things. No you soccer, can't use no it to... soccer fields? No, you can't use it for soccer fields or to buy new trucks or pave okay. roads. It doesn't go into the general fund. No. So it's basically after two, three years, it's kind of like you said, it's kind of worthless to a certain part other than... Uh, well, I mean, uh, other than to the extent that that's supplanting other money that would have gone to that that can be used for whatever you want to use it for, but... Okay. You know, frank, frankly, most of those things aren't things that we're already doing with town money. So, well, using that, we're not. Are we spending a lot of town money in front of his store? It'd be no different, right? No, I'm just saying. Well, probably not. So, if there's this, you know, if we're getting all these taxes to put money in front of someone's store, I'm not. After a couple of years, like I said, how far can you go? Well, I mean, it's know? not like the the frontage of the store. It's I understand like it's a corner thing. though, but it's not like it's a real small town. I suppose it's yeah. you know. It's so Come on, come on up and speak I mean, I was, So I was in Massachusetts this week, well, yeah, yesterday, Monday, looking at the dispensary. And that's why I wanted to like get up and say something here. So our uh, average dispensary in Massachusetts is doing about $9 million in sales. And uh, the traffic is a nightmare because, now given the fact once there is recreational marijuana dispensary is here. Like, is the, are these people gonna go there to Massachusetts? That's a question to be asked. And are we gonna get the same amount of traffic concentration that Massachusetts is getting because it was one of the first states to do it in on East Coast? So um, those are the things I, I just felt like maybe you could use that information. But as a citizen and as an individual of the community, I would vote to prohibit it. I would, I think we have some years left to see the effects of it in the community of these dispensaries. And uh, we don't necessarily have to be so open-minded about it where we say, oh yes, the state wants it and let's go for it because it's gonna bring in some more revenue. I, I feel like it'd be better to let other people take the lead, it's okay to be, uh, to wait around for a little bit and see what effects uh, it brings to the communities uh, where they put the dispensary. That would help us to make a strong argument of like, oh yes, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. That's all I wanted to say. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting me speak. Sure, and you know, as, as we were discussing, we will be having a public hearing and we'd, yes. we'd love to hear from you then too. Awesome, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, not to belabor this, but I mean, I do get into kind of the quandary based on what, what Tom was saying that, you know, it's not like, it's not like marijuana doesn't exist in Weathersfield now. Um, you know, so the effect, you know, what is the diff marginal difference in effect on our community by having uh, a regulated place that sells it versus wherever people are getting it now. Well, maybe I have no idea. Well, you may get a storefront rented that wouldn't have been rented. So maybe that's about what you're going to get. Uh, a bit. Uh, that's probably what you're going to get. And you get a lot more cars than you have now. I mean, that's another condition. I mean, you got to consider all these things. Yeah. All right. 
we have a we have a plan. Um, all right, next minutes of November fifteenth. Make a motion to approve. Mr. Chair. All right. I'll second. All right, motion by George, second by Peter. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Okay. Staff reports. Um, the only thing that I have to report is um, I was contacted this week by um, the developer for Starbucks and they are looking to secure a foundation permit um, in the next week or two. Um, and we also received building plans for uh, Larissa and Tony Lenoche at 146 Main. Um, they submitted their final plans yesterday. They were reviewed by the engineering department. They are all set. So they're gonna be preparing the mylars for signature and then um, that project will get rolling as well. Did they get squared away with HVC? Yes. Go, okay, good. Yep. I don't wanna hear about that again. There, there, are, there, there are a few items that they do need to go back for, but they're aware of that. To them or to us? To HVC. Okay. Yeah. And if there's any other properties that we have any inquiries about, I can give you information. Yeah, somebody asked me again, and, and I think I mentioned it to you months ago, and it's not your jurisdiction. The the U-Haul trucks yes. at the, the hardware store yeah. on the Silestine. Uh, Charles did issue a cease and desist, and the owner did contact me last week about um, submitting a special permit to go forward with that use. Okay. Yep. Now that's a separate ownership from the other thing that might be coming into it. Yes. Yes. The yes. Uh, the property that we were just talking about is actually owned by Ocean Street. Oh, it is. It's the, the little hardware store yeah. like opposite from Vito's. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like what I was seeing there all along. But you make me the, the bad guy, but I have to say something. Is so this down is at the store itself. This is a uh, 574 Silestine, um, about a block to the south on the east side. Um, they have a current approval for uh, display of outdoor merchandise. They were cited um, for merchandise in addition to what is typically. Um, approved so specifically um, the planning and zoning approval the condition is that they can only have three items out front um, and uh, you know this is the one next to the flower box yeah they used to have the Zipper paint stones. dripping signs yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so i think it would probably be more appropriate to uh, delineate an area that they can maintain for outdoor display instead of saying a certain number of items because it's just impossible for the enforcement officer to make sure, you know, that that's. Um, Makes sense to me. Yeah. And the other one is the Cross Automotive? Yeah, the corner of Wells Road. Um, so that is going to design review next Wednesday night. They are looking to remove um, the lifts in the auto repair uh, portion of the building on the south side closest to the diner um, and expand the convenience store into that area. They would still maintain um, an oil change service on the north end of the building. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't do oil changes. Right, and it would be a different, they would have that space for and lease. On the north, the isn't, the, isn't there a convenience store now on the north side? Uh, it's between, in the center. It's between the oil change yeah. and oh, the... Oh, okay, so it's in between. Yeah, okay. there's like a pass-through on the very north end. So they had come to design review. Um, they modified their uh, submission to include a second entrance to the building on the east elevation. Um, so that's what they'll be reviewing uh, next week. That's the back? Okay. <laughs> Can we see any activity on Boondoggle? Boondoggle, actually, they did submit their mylars to us about three weeks ago, and at our last meeting, um, the them. chairman signed them. So they have been filed on the land records. 
Um, so at this point, he needs to get his building plans together for the building permit. Something that I think we used to get occasionally was a report from the zoning enforcement officer. I was wondering if you could ask for one, because I don't, I don't think we've seen one in a year or more, and I just don't know what what is out there. I mean, and, you know, like, like with the U-Hauls, I mean, we probably all either see things or have people ask us about things, and it yep. would be helpful to, to see that. You know, I mean, he, he doesn't need to come here and talk to us about it or anything, but at least he... I, I did speak with him about it. He did agree to do that, so I will touch base with him again, and I'm sure that he could join us at one of the upcoming meetings well, and give a report. This time of the year, yep. he doesn't have grass to go out and talk to. To measure the lawns. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. He's got, he's got a little easy there. Okay. Yeah, it's just furniture by the side of the road. <laughs> right. It's all other nonsense and yarn. Anything else? That's all I have. All right. Anybody else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Joe, second by George to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you all very much. Are these two likely to be at the next meeting, or are we going to have a next meeting? So the next meeting is the 20th. Yep. Um, I was planning on having the meeting unless, okay. um, you know, this, the, the first item, 574, that was the result of a um, enforcement order. Um, yeah. I don't think that there's any immediacy to that. Um, they, they just reached out to us right when they got that to, to clarify that. So um, there is a potential that design review might not be ready with that next week. Okay. Um, so if not, I don't know if you, if it's only this item, I don't know if you would prefer to hold it. I mean, is it still for soft, soft right, huh? No, just the other, the alarm. alarm. Yeah, why don't we decide when we get closer okay. to a time and, okay. you know. I'll let you know how I mean, the design I'd, review I'd hate process. to. I'd hate to push it off to January and then have the meeting be on an off day because of the holiday and then have three people here. So, yep. yeah. yeah. Or six months or Yeah. Yeah, we'll kind of play it by ear. Well, you said the 20th? The 20th. December, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.